Welcome to part 3 of Robotics Engineering, Robot Dynamics. The outline of the video is as follows. Adams, we will take a look at Adams, a multi-body dynamics software. Next, we will move on to validation of inverse dynamics of a 3-axis CARA robot using the following methods. First, the analytical expressions. Second, the MATLAB hard code in which we will enter all the variable values and check the final answer. Third, the MATLAB general code. This code can be used for inverse dynamics of any robot. Finally, we will validate the answers with Adams. What is Adams? Adams is a multi-body dynamics simulation solution. It helps engineers to study the dynamics of moving parts and how loads and forces are distributed throughout the mechanical systems. So why do we use Adams? Adams aims to simulate real-world physics. It improves engineering efficiency and reduces product development costs. Adams can evaluate and manage complex interactions between disciplines including motion, structures, actuation, and controls to better optimize our designs. Adam has various modules. The first is controls, mechatronics, flexible body integration, durability, and finally vibrations. So here is a screenshot from the Adams software. Here you can see that there is a tool ribbon which helps to make designs. Then we have the settings option where we can set all the simulation parameters. On the left hand side, there is a box which displays all the current parameters such as bodies, connectors, motions, forces which we have used. And finally, the working grid. Here you can see SCARA robot made from thin cylindrical links. The links are connected by a joint. So here the file drop down menu has these options. The edit has the following options. The view menu has this render option. We can use solid fill or wireframe as per our requirement. Then the settings tool. We can set the coordinate system. The working grid. We can change the working grid according to our needs. We can set the location or the orientation. Then units, we can check and change the units. We can set the gravity in any direction we want for the simulation. And there are many other options. This is the front view, the side view, the top view. This is the coordinate axis. We can move any part, fit to size, dynamic zoom, then we can rotate, we have a pan option and finally the zoom option. These are different bodies, a box, cylinder, sphere, link and there are various other options. Different types of connectors, fixed joint, revolute joint, translational joint and so on. We can add motions to joints, translational motion and rotational motion. We can give a torque, a force or create a spring damper system. Then there are different elements such as 2D or 3D data spline. There is a controls toolkit. Here we can measure an angle or distance or any other parameter we want. Then there are various plugins as we discussed earlier. We can simulate our model, set the simulation time, number of steps and the size of each step. We can have static equilibrium simulation, initial condition simulation or drag simulation. And finally we can plot, we can check data points with a cursor. We can add or clear plots. So there are various other options to toggle. Some features such as the axis or the wireframe or solid fill. These are the bodies, connectors, motions, forces and so on. Now we will take a look at SCARA robot, a 
three axis Kara robot with two revolute joints and one prismatic joint. Here you can see the Skara robot which we just saw in Adams. This is the DH parameter table for the robot. Now we will enter geometric parameters, inertial parameters and temporal parameters to validate our codes. So these are the analytical expressions for the three joint torques tau1, tau2 and tau3. We substitute all the values that we saw in the previous slide and we get the following results. Tau1 is 2.83 Newton meter, tau2 is minus 1 Newton meter, tau3 is minus 4.405 Newton meter. Now we will move on to validate the inverse dynamics with MATLAB hard code. Here we enter all the variable values which we saw in the previous slide and we have the analytical expressions for the three axis SCARA robot. Now we will run the code. Here we see the value of torque 1, torque 2 and torque 3. These match with our analytical expressions. So we have completed the validation through MATLAB hard code. Now we will take a look at validation through MATLAB general code. Here we have the tconcat file which is used to concat the matrices, the project file which is the main file, the geometric variable file which gives us the geometric information about SCARA, the DH parameter file. Then we have the derivative script which helps us to calculate the derivative of the transformation matrices and then the arm matrix which gives us the transformation matrix from the tip to the base of the robot. Here we have the geometric variable file xc, yc and zc are the center of mass of the links. Then we have dh parameters. The first line gives the number of joints, the second the degrees of freedom. Then we have alpha, a, d, theta and flag. This is the project file, the main file. Here we will calculate the inverse dynamics using Euler Lagrange technique. Here NJ is number of joints, NF is number of frames, DOF is the degree of freedom and flag if it is 1 we get a rotary joint and if it is 0 we have a prismatic joint. We define the global variables and define the gravity direction. DQ is the joint velocity and D2Q is the joint acceleration. We input the DH parameter file and the geometric variable file. Here we define a variable u. We have to calculate the derivative of the transformation matrix from the tip to the base. So, u is used to represent this in a simpler format. u can be interpreted as the effect of motion of joint j on all the points on link i. uu helps us to calculate the interactive forces between all the joints. uu is calculated by having the partial derivative of u with respect to the joint coordinate. d helps us to calculate inertial acceleration related matrix. h is the Coriolis and centrifugal force vector. c is the gravity loading force vector and tau gives us the torques. So now we will run the code to check the torque values. Here we see that the torque values match our values which we got from analytical expressions and the hard code. Now let us take a look at validation through Adams. Here we have a SCARA robot ready. Ground, offset, link 1, link 2 and link 3. We have Q joint, theta 2 joint, theta 1 joint and the fixed ground joint. We have three motions, Q motion, theta 1 motion and theta 2 motion. Now we will check the inertial properties of our bodies. Here we have mass and moment of inertia terms defined as 0 for offset. Link 1 has a mass of 1 kg and we have considered a thin cylinder for inertial parameters. We have link 2 of mass 1 kg and link 3 of mass 0.5 kg with respective inertial parameters. Now we will define the motions. 
here we have to remember the convention that motions in the counterclockwise direction are positive and motions in the clockwise direction are negative. Motion in the positive z axis direction for translational joints are positive and motions in the negative z direction for translational joints are negative. Since we want joint motion in the negative z direction, we take negative values of acceleration and velocity. One has to take care of signs to get correct results. Now we have theta 1 motion. Here we have designed the joint and defined the motion in the clockwise direction. Therefore, to get motion in the counterclockwise direction, we have to define the acceleration and velocity with a negative sign, but the magnitudes remain the same. Now we have theta 2 for explaining the previous point. We have defined the theta 2 motion in the counterclockwise direction and therefore the acceleration and velocity values have a positive sign. Now we will carry out a simulation with a time of 0 0.5 seconds with 50 steps. Here we get a warning because the values which we have entered for the inertial parameters are unusual for rigid bodies as we have taken a thin cylinder. Now we will check the torques on each joint. We have the force for translational joint in z direction. The value is minus 4.403 which matches our previous values. Now for theta 1 we can name the measure as we want. We will check the torque in z direction. The value is close to 2.85. We transfer to full plot. It takes us to the plotting tool. We see that the value is 2.833. Next we have theta 2. We measure the torque in the z direction and we have a value of minus 1. We can transfer it to the full plot and check the value with cursor data. So we see that our torque values have matched with our previous results and we complete the validation through Adams. Thank you.